So far, whilst we've been talking about audio in terms of effects and a couple of different ways that we've looked at already how we apply effects either to a clip or across multiple clips by using the audio track mixer. Well, whilst we've been talking about modifying audio, what we've not really looked at is how we edit audio in terms of getting in really close to it and perhaps micro editing, maybe clicks or things like that within the audio WAV file. Well, that's what we're going to look at in this tutorial. We're going to zoom in close to edit our audio. Just for a little bit of variety, I've opened up this audio file. This is the audio file that you heard a while ago of the guitar and the vocal. I think you might have had enough of the piano by now. Anyway, irrespective of the audio that you do open up, well, I've got mine open up here in the source monitor, and this is going to allow me to zoom in really close to our waveform. All audio will have a waveform like this, although that's not necessarily true. Here, you've got two channels. You've got the top channel, which applies to the left-hand side of a stereo field, and the bottom channel applies to the right-hand side of a stereo field. If this was a mono file, of course, we would only have that one single file. We wouldn't get those two channels. But nevertheless, what I'm going to talk about now applies for both mono and stereo files. If you want to zoom in really close to this audio file, then, well, no prizes for guessing. One way of doing this is by grabbing this right-hand drag slider and then moving it to the left. And as you get closer to the left-hand handle, then you will zoom in to that particular point. OK, and when these two handles, the left and right, are together, then we are zoomed in this close. And we can now start making out the audio waveform, going up and down, oscillating, to represent the audio that this is. And you'll see that darker green vertical bar there to indicate where your CTI is at the moment. Each time you move along, then that vertical bar will go with you. OK, simple enough. Now I'm just going to go back to the beginning by clicking here and I'll return to where we were in terms of the zoom factor by grabbing the right hand handle and dragging it right back over to the right. So now we see the far out zoom of the whole of this audio file. We're zoomed out as far as we can go. OK, now you can't have failed to have noticed that we have numbers at the left hand side and at the right hand side. Well, these indicate at the present time how long this particular audio file is and at the present time we can see that this audio file is 15 seconds in length, plus 24 frames. We've got four sets of dual numbers there. The first will be hours, then we've got minutes, then we've got seconds, and then we've got how many frames. Now, bearing in mind that whatever you see there for your frames will be dictated by the video format that you are using. I'm using PAL, so my frames will go up to 25 before returning to zero and adding one to my seconds. If you are working with NTSC, then you are pretty much working at 30 frames per second at 29.97. OK, now that's fairly close. That's fairly zoomed in. But if you want to go further and look at what are known as the audio units, then click on this wrench tool here. And then within this category, you'll see a couple of options that haven't been checked. This second one down, for example, show audio time units. I'll select it to make it active. And as soon as I do, by looking at the time code now, either at the bottom left or the bottom right, we'll look at the bottom left, well, we can see that we still see the hours, the minutes and the seconds. But instead of having two numerical places for frames, we now have what are called audio time unit placement. And we get five numerical places. So that will mean you can really focus in to a tiny amount. I'll go back over to the wrench, my options there, and go back up and switch that off. OK, so it's there if you need it. Now I will click back on here once more, because this time I want to show a time ruler running across my timeline here. So by choosing the last option, time ruler numbers, you can now see just below our time code and just above the drag sliders, we now see a numerical ruler so that we can really focus in on a particular time point. For example, if I place my CTI here, well, this informs me that I'm at seven seconds and eight frames along. And if I zoom in, this time I'll grab the left hand handle then, as you can see, we still see the same vertical bar, that green vertical bar there, to indicate where we're positioned. But now, because we've got this ruler, if we want to move our CTI to a different position, we don't have to guess. We can just click and see where it is on our time ruler. And if I once more come back over here and click to show the audio time units, I'll do it in a second. Just notice that we are zoomed in at the moment to a frame factor. But as soon as I do click on here, notice now what happens. 
Our left and right handles are further apart, which means if I were to drag these in, we would be zooming in close to exact sample level. OK, now that might not be all that important to you all the time, but there will be occasions when you want to do this. OK, so that's zooming in close to edit audio. As I say, something you won't use all the time, but it's there for when you do need it.